are you ready? Are you ready for your daily dose? Your daily dose of radio rehab. You know, I I got myself together. I'm ready. I, I'm, I was a little unsure. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you're ready. You need to be ready this ready. evening. Yeah, you okay, need yeah. to be ready. Hey, folks, welcome. Welcome into 1017 FM, 710 Keel. Welcome into another edition of Strategies for Living. I'm Dr. David McMillan. He's Jimmy Bryant, Ph.D. That means he produces, he hosts, and he directs. So what's all the hubbub? You said I, I better be ready. Well, I'm going to ask you a question. You know, I like to ask, I, yeah. I like to start by asking you a question Yeah. at the top of every program, right? Right. Okay, so let me give you a real easy one Ooh, today. Okay. What are relationships for? I thought it was dun, supposed to be dun, easy. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, well, I, look, I'm going to throw you a lifeline. Thank you very much. I'm going to I'm going to throw you the lifeline of our life strategist this evening. She's Cindy Laura Renard. Her new book, and she's been she's been a life strategist several times. Okay, she's got uh, her stripes. She's got her 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 stripes, but she's got a brand new book out. I'm so excited about it. I can't believe she got this book out in a. She wrote it within a year. Uh, we'll 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 ask her about that. I, I would imagine she got some help from from beyond, uh, but we'll, we'll ask about that. Uh, the new book is called Spiritual Coupling. It is a guidebook for experiencing a holy relationship, and the okay. the, the answer to that question: What are relationships for? You, Cindy's answer may surprise us, but that's your lifeline. Okay, we'll bring. I'm Cindy, happy to have an expert. We'll, okay, we'll, we'll bring Cindy <laughs> on to give you that lifeline, and all of all of us a lifeline in a moment, folks. We appreciate you tuning into Strategies for a Living now in our. Well, we're heading towards 31 years that's on right. the air, and we're brought to you by Azalea Cleaners. We're brought to you by the Robinson Film Center. We're brought to you by Pintail Roofing. Roof, roof. We're brought to you by Learning RX, by Cannabis with Love, Empress, 3766 Uri Drive in Shreveport. And we're brought to you by the Shreveport Little Theater. Back in a moment to meet the author of Spiritual Coupling, Cindy Laura Renard. Uh, we'll be right back here on Strategies. The following program is paid for by David McMillan. Caddo Electrical Contracting is the area's most reliable local, commercial, and residential contracting company. From the smallest service jobs to the largest commercial jobs, let the experienced electricians at Caddo Electrical Contracting Put the safety of your home or business first. With 40 years of experience, Caddo Electrical is known for complete satisfaction with first-rate electrical services. Visit them online at caddoelectrical.com. Well, the, the bumper music isn't working to this evening, so oh, I have to so sing us in. <laughs> Love is a mini You're going to scare her away. Thing. Stop it. Oh, 
Okay. Stop it. Welcome in. <laughs> Welcome in to Strategies for Living here on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. Jimmy Bryant, <laughs> David McMillan. Let's welcome into the program now, if I have not scared her away, Cindy Laura Renard. She's an international speaker on A Course in Miracles. She is the author of A Course in Health and Well-Being and the best-selling book, The Business of Forgiveness. Also, best-selling book, Heaven is Now. It, she has a uh, master's degree in spiritual psychology from the University of Santa Monica. And is also a visionary singer and songwriter. So she probably does have something to say about my singing. Cindy Laura, <laughs> welcome back to Strategies for Living. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Hi, David. Hi, Jimmy. Hi. How are you? It's good to be back. Well, uh, we're we're just glad Jimmy's just glad you stayed after my. Uh, that's <laughs> right. Love is a mini splintered thing. <laughs> I, I would have liked to hear a little bit more, but that's okay. Ah, <laughs> well, oh, flattery See, Jimmy? will get you everywhere. See, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are you gonna? You, you're 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 Jimmy's lifeline because I, I right. asked him the question and you heard the silence. Yeah. What are what are relationships for? <laughs> You're his lifeline, Cindy. Help. I I like the question. Great great start question. Great starter. Well, have you heard of the new S word? The new S word. Let's The new F F word. Oh, the new F, F word. word. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> right? No? No. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll explain a little further. Okay. If you would like. Okay. There are two purposes to relationships, but the important one is that it serves the Holy Spirit's purpose. And that would mean that our relationships are for forgiveness. Hmm. True that's the uh, that's the F word yes. you were talking. That's about. the F word. Yeah. Yes, that's the new F word. Yes, and and when we understand that there's a whole another way of being within a relationship, um, no matter who the relationship is with, um, and we can look at it from a different perspective then we start to feel empowered in the relationship instead of feeling like you have to be a victim of circumstances. Mm. So there's two purposes. There's the ego's purpose, which is for the purpose of projecting our own guilt that we feel that's been repressed onto the other and and that and that's that a purpose. that's prime in a rela- in a primary relationship. Oh right? yeah, this, yeah. Is, this runs rampant in relationships yeah. until we realize there's another way to look at them. Right. Another way to look at them, and and once we understand that they're all for forgiveness, forgiveness of ourselves and others, then we start to really step into our power, and we don't have to be a victim of our circumstances and the conflict we feel then turns into a whole new approach of how to deal with whatever the conflicts are that, that are coming up. Yeah. I, I, Cindy, I know that when you and hubby Gary uh, <laughs> go out and do workshops and things like that, people ask, what about soulmate? You know, so mm-hmm. what are soulmates? I mean, we use that word... A lot, almost yeah, almost cycle babble. I'm not sure we really understand at all what a soulmate is. What what is a soulmate? Yeah, I said, I, we we do get asked that a lot, and and it's understandable that people want to find their soulmate. A soulmate doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a romantic partner. A soulmate could be anyone that you have. Uh, a function to fulfill with some kind of important work to do together Um, that could take the form of being romantic or you, or you marry someone and about the rest of your life, that's your soulmate uh, because you have things that you're learning together and you're growing together and spiritual partnership. 
uh, even if you don't realize that's why you're in the relationship, <laughs> is to grow spiritually. Uh, but a soulmate could mean a, a business partnership, but you but you come together for the purpose of serving a holy purpose within that business partnership. Right. It could be uh, a soulmate could be a, a very close friend that where you're learning, also learning and growing together or learning your lessons of forgiveness. So a common idea is that it's always about it being, being romantic and that's not necessarily true. Hmm. So, so yeah, y- y- you then, you know, this, this right away, first part of the book i mean you've just you've just taken you've taken the whole relationship thing and kind of turned it on its side turned it upside down <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad thank you thank yeah. you for saying that <laughs> yeah i and, and and that is a that is a definite I, you're taking it exactly like i meant it it's a high compliment i you know the last time you and i visited uh was after you wrote your your last book and, um, I, you know, you, I think you told me you were working on something very special for the next book and I'll be doggone. You got it out quickly with, I can't believe that you wrote this book within a year and, uh, <laughs> man, it, it is packed full, Cindy. I mean, you've, you've, yeah, you've got I, a lot in here. Yeah. When I looked back at the contents, actually myself, when I was done, I, I was thinking, what, what happened? How did that happen? (laughs) Because I, but I, I do realize when, when I was writing, um, I tend to get in a very inspired place. So it's a form of channeling for me Mm. and I feel it when it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I feel it when it's happening. It sort of writes itself Hmm. and a lot of the ideas for it, I did have already from, you know, several years ago, but, Yes, basically the book was written in the in this past year. Um, although I had jotted down ideas for it, it had to grow over time. It did grow over time, and um, your books it, keep getting to me, Cindy, richer and richer. I remember I was so proud for you uh, when you wrote that first book, A Course in uh, Health and Well Being, and mm. I remember you know. Um, I remember our our uh, time together, and then you came out with the business of forgiveness, and the last book, Heaven Is Now. Um, the evo- I mean, the books are just getting richer and richer. They're all great, but I think you've outdone yourself in spiritual coupling. I really do. Hmm. Wow, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. I um, I've always known how important uh, relationships are because. That's why we're appearing to be here. We're always in relationship with something, you know, you, you know, it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to, you don't have to be in a romantic relationship to receive the benefits of awakening from this dream of separation yeah. that we're dreaming. It doesn't have to be through a romantic partner, even though this book is the, that's, the focus, but it, it certainly can be applied to any relationship. When you look at the content, and what it's really saying, uh, you can take anything in the book and apply it to all kinds of relationships. What is the most common mistake that we make in relationships? Mm. Even though there are many, I'd say one of the big ones is blaming the other person mm. uh, for the, making them the cause of our upset. Yeah. So it's making something, someone outside of you, the cause. Because when we do that, that's an ego thing. We, when we, when we do that, we know we're doing that projection thing, right? Yes. That's, that's all about projection. We project our own ideas and wishes onto the other and assign roles. We tend to assign roles that we think our partners or other people uh, should fulfill. And when we do that, we're going to set ourselves up to be disappointed because when we start to do that, we're it's making a statement that we're trying to possess or own or control the other. And that doesn't really work too well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just happens to be <laughs> impossible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But when you start to take responsibility for your part, with, which means how you're thinking, who you're thinking with, rather, are you thinking with the ego part of your mind, which is the teacher of upset, the teacher of pain, that's going to perpetuate the conflict, which is that's part of what we do when we project our own upsets onto other people. Um, if we do that, we're going to recycle. You know, that upset will just, it'll just stay in place. There's no resolution. Hmm. Until we recognize, wait a minute, there's another part of the mind that we can think from, that we can choose. That's what we would call the right part of the mind or the Holy Spirit mind that has a whole other interpretation of what's happening. And when we listen to that voice, we become empowered. We don't feel like a victim and we can take control of our own thinking, which can help them us let go of our grievances and judgments much quicker. Um, and that's part of what forgiveness is. Cindy Laura Renard is our life strategist today. Her new book is Spiritual Coupling. It's a guidebook for experiencing a holy relationship, of course, from the principles of A Course in Miracles. And uh, you can find Spiritual Coupling wherever you buy books. You can also go to CindyLaura.com. That's C-I-N-D-Y-L-O-R-A.com. Uh, hey, since we're talking about relationships, you may want to be thinking about a date, right? Uh, let me tell you a great date place, the Robinson Film Center. Yeah, no better place for a date than the Robinson. 617 Texas Street, downtown Shreveport. You know, we say it a lot. There, you got to go see for yourself. There's no place like the Robinson. Abby Singer's Bistro, full-service bistro and bar on the second floor of, uh, of RFC, at, open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Saturday. I, I would start with some menu items, but Jimmy would probably say, stop it. That's torture. Yeah, I know. I'm torturing you. But, but hey, folks, look, go, go to robinsonfilmcenter.org. You can, <laughs> you can find out what happens to be showing right now. You can find out all about, uh, you know, what, what, uh, what's going on, like the summer film camps. Coming up July the 10th through the 14th, the movie musical camp Ghostbusters. It, it's appropriate for grades three through twelve, and uh, and that's just around the corner. You can you can find out more about it at robinsonfilmcenter.org. So join the crowd, join the fun, become a member, get discounts on movies, get concession upgrades, get bistro deals. RFC six seventeen Texas Street, downtown Shreveport. Robinsonfilmcenter.org.
And welcome back. Welcome back into 1017 FM, 710 Keel. Welcome back into Strategies for Living. Jimmy Bryant, David McMillan, our life strategist today, Cindy Laura Renard, and her brand new book. We're getting to talk about it Spiritual Coupling. And when did the book actually uh, come out, Cindy? Uh, it came out just a week ago, a little over a week ago. Or, or, or tell me, this is this very the, fresh. Well, are, maybe are, ten days. Are we the first? <laughs> inter, are we the first interview? I hope we are. Uh, you are the second interview, but well, you know what? Well, we're like it's Avis still within then. the yeah. first two. There the you go. Two. Yeah. That's yeah. very good. <laughs> what was the old saying in Avis back in the day? We're number two. That's why we have to try harder. So. <laughs> We'll just keep trying harder, Cindy. <laughs> we'll just Cindy. keep trying. <laughs> All right, so you can get you can get spiritual coupling, uh, of course, where you buy books. Uh, we all you know turn to Amazon.com. Uh, Absolutely. And so yeah. you can you can get it there, but you can also uh, check out Cindy's website, and there's a lot of goodies there uh, that you can find, including her music. It's, it's really full. Like, uh, I, I wanted to compliment you on that. You, uh, your website is just, oh. it's got a lot to offer. And Thank you. It, it really does. That. It really does. And so, and, and if, so it's Cindy Laura, C I N D Y L O R A, Cindy Laura.com. Okay. So, um, you, you, you talk about, choosing and the, the 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 real you know the real bottom line is we're i guess in relationships and really just in life in in general we're choosing love over fear that's the, that's the primary deal yeah. but especially in relationships in communication right right that's always the 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 choice we have as decision makers or decision making minds. So we're always choosing between uh, love or fear. Those are the, really the only two emotions that, that we have that of course the miracle talks about. So if we're love is just itself and we don't have to feel hard, but it's when you're just coming from love and just being love that's all that really matters. But the problem is, is when we choose fear, that there's like a spinoff of emotions that come from fear. I mean, that could include things like jealousy, envy, judgment, grievances, blame. All of that falls under the category of fear. But here's the key. If there's turbulence in your relationship or around you, your thoughts don't have to be turbulent. If there's violence around you, your thoughts don't have to be violent. The choice is yours to make. So which teacher you're choosing between. If you choose the Holy Spirit as your teacher, then, which is, you know, your, that's your power, which will give you, as I mentioned, a whole nother way of perceiving your partner, whoever it is before you, you'll start to think of them not really even as that, body you'll start to see their the conflict they're bringing into the relationship they'll you'll start to see that as a call for help a call for love that's what they're doing if they are angry or they're projecting onto you ideas onto you or appearing to possess or own you in some way that is because they're hurting themselves and they're calling for love so that, when we recognize that, we can start to change our minds and start to perceive them as, wow, they're really innocent, but they're just, they're basically saying, look, I'm hurting here. I, I, I need some help. I'm trying to communicate. I've lost my connection. So if we learn to see what's beneath the surface of what someone's trying to communicate, the communication will flow much better. Yeah. That is such a, that's such an important, massive concept if i can just see that if i can hold on to that then i'm 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 really doing a lot to get my own ego uh, under uh, you know under con- quote unquote control right yeah yeah true because the inter- intervention we always seek for other people it's really for ourselves when yeah. we feel conflict we lose our peace 
We need to intervene in our own minds first and get our own self-centered, start thinking with our right minds, because when we do that, we'll naturally be able to extend then our love to the other person. Yeah. And then whatever we say or do would be helpful instead of hurtful. And, and back to something you mentioned much earlier here in our conversation, the new F word. That's yeah. really the, the, the big tool, isn't it? Uh, and, it's, yes. it and it is a miracle. It's a miracle. Forgiveness. Is. Yes, forgiveness is is the miracle. Forgiveness is, and you know, it's it's a different way of of understanding what a miracle really is. And of course, miracles, which is what my books are always based on, the miracles has nothing to do with anything physical. It's it's a shift that occurs in the mind from thinking with the ego to starting to think with the Holy Spirit. Hmm. And. True forgiveness recognizes actually that what you thought another has done to you hasn't even really occurred because the separation from God has not occurred. We're all innocent then. If nothing really happened, we haven't separated from our source, we really are all truly innocent. <laughs> we, and that's I, the foundation. I, I, did a, I did a commercial for Robinson Film Center, the you know movie movie theater a moment ago. We're, it, it, we're kind of all in a movie of our own, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we yeah, are. Yeah. We're all we're all watching our own movies, basically. Yep. So when I go to the Robinson, I'm watching a movie within my movie. You're watching a movie within the movie. That's right. Yeah. And you are, and you're thinking, right? You're sitting there watching the movie. Sometimes, don't you have all kinds of emotions? Sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah. I right? mean, you you if, yeah. depending on the movie, you can get on the edge of your seat. You you know, if they were if they were to hook us up. To the, right. you know, to, to, we we would see the changes mm. that would light up in our brains and in our bodies. I mean, you know, in our yeah. nervous system. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. You know, we're, we're experiencing, uh, you know, in a great movie, we're experiencing the real deal. Turns out this is a fantastic movie. We're all living. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, the whole thing, the whole thing is a movie. Yeah. The whole thing we're watching our own movies play out from another level. We're mentally reviewing that which has already gone by. Hmm. It's already uh, done and even over because our scripts are written. Not set in stone, but because sen- different scenarios can play out, but it's still within a within a higher script, within yeah. a fixed script. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the beautiful things with A, a Course in Miracles. Uh, you know, it's, okay, well, we're all going to get there. We're all going to yeah. get to the same place. Um, what does the course say? Um, you know, this is that you, you, have got, this is a required course, but the, you know, when you take it or <laughs> it's up to you, yep. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but that's close. That's right. <laughs> that's right. When you, the time you take it is voluntary. Yes, that's right. But it's a required course in the sense that at some point, everyone at some point will come to the awareness the enlightenment of reality and who and what they are, right? And where they, and what reality really is. Cindy, is there, especially within relationships when, you know, because we get very focused, we, we know, and I want to talk in a little while, I I want to talk about being right and being happy, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but you know, when we're in the throes of a relationship and I, you know, I'm, I'm, whether it's a whether it's my business partner, whether it's my romantic partner, uh, whoever it is, and I know I'm right, right? I know I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> How do I tell? How do I tell if I'm inside, internally, listening to my ego or, or listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Well, if you were listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, there would no need to defend against anything. <laughs> there would no need to put, to try to prove your point. So when Instead, I'm proving, would, when I'm trying to prove my point, then it's it's like a hundred percent of the time I know I'm operating from ego. If yes, if you're coming from that defense mechanism that that yeah. feels that that need, that innate need that desire, that drive, that you have to be right, which makes the other person wrong, which already right there creates a difference between the two of you. 
Yep. And it perpetuates the idea of separation. Now, being right in the book, I'm not talking about when you're just helping someone with directions, you know, going somewhere. Right. Like you, you want to make sure they get there. So you want to, so if they're making a left turn and you know that they're supposed to go right or else they're going to get totally off track, that's a whole, that's, that's appropriate in those circumstances, you know, to say, oh, hey, I, you want to turn right here because the building is on your right, right? So in the book, I'm talking more about the idea of of when arguments often are started and perpetuated by this drive that comes from the ego that you have to, because you feel you need to defend yourself because you feel you've been attacked, that you have to keep proving to the other person your position um, and being right again, which is a, again, it's a, it's a separation mechanism. It's a way to separate both of you and it makes the whole game of separation real. And there's no resolution in that in, in trying to be right. There's really no resolution. So you want to try to create a win-win situation where everyone benefits and recognize we're all right. If you come from the idea that we're all equally the son of God together as one, we're all right. We're all right. But in relationships, the ego speaks very loud and the ego wants to prove its point. Right. And because the ego thinks that's what you are, you, it thinks that you are the ego, you are the body. And it wants, it's a way of it confirming itself that it exists. Hmm. That's what the need to be right does. It says, as an ego, I exist. And I'm going to prove to you that I exist because, look, in this particular situation, I'm right and you're wrong. And the ego loves that stuff, loves it because, again, it gets to maintain its innocence at the expense of another, saying the other's really guilty, but you're really innocent. Look, because you're right. That's just one trick the ego has up its sleeve, one of many tricks. You, you talk, there's so much packed in here. Again, folks, the book is Spiritual Coupling. It's a, a guidebook for experiencing a holy relationship. Cindy Laura Renard is the author and our life strategist. Uh, there's so much you've got packed in here. Um, you say experiencing a holy relationship starts with the kind of relationship you have with yourself, which is determined by how you perceive yourself. Yeah. That that's 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 power packed right there. Yes, because if we um, understand, if we don't rather understand who we are, that we're we are holy children of God. To put it bluntly, that we're. And there's nothing your holiness cannot do, and that you're holy because God created you holy. And when you understand that's your real identity, and you start to identify with that as your identity instead of instead of the body, the personality part of you, um, you start to really step into your power. And when you do that, you're developing a, a holy relationship with the Holy Spirit as your teacher, which really is the only true holy relationship is the one you have with the Holy Spirit as your teacher, but it manifests then in the physical world as the relationships we have with people. So when you're clear on that, that the Holy Spirit's your teacher and you're understanding and you're knowing yourself as you really are in truth, then all your relationships as a reflection serve a holy purpose. And then they become holy that sense the book is spir so, the book is spiritual coupling cindy laura renard is the author and our life strategist today you can find spiritual coupling uh, at amazon.com where where we all get our books you can also go to cindy laura.com c-i-n-d-y-l-o-r-a.com it's been going on for 101 plus years well, of course i'm talking about shreveport little theater american theater at its best, 812 Margaret Place in Streetport. You know, the summer musical is set now. The 2023 summer musical is Anything Goes. Starts July the 21st. This is going to be a sellout. Runs through the 30th, so you got to go. Get your tickets. Go to com. 
you can uh, you can you can buy your tickets right there, and you need to do that right now. Of course, you can also call the box office three one eight four two four 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 three nine. While you're at ShreveportLittleTheater.com, check out the 102nd season. Man, there's some good stuff. Always Patsy Cline in September. My Way, a tribute to the music of Sinatra in November. And uh, the Wonderettes back in December with Winter Wonderettes. We've got uh, five women wearing the same dress as a Lanyap production in, uh, in January. Dial M for Murder in February and March. And in April, Jimmy Buffett's Escape to Margaritaville. You, 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 you got to go. Get your season tickets uh, right now. ShreveportLittleTheater.com. American Theater at its best. 812 Margaret Place in Shreveport. ShreveportLittleTheater.com. And welcome back. Welcome back into 1017 FM, 710 Keel. Welcome back into Strategies for Living. Jimmy Bryant, David McMillan, Cindy Laura Renard uh, is our life strategist today. And she is uh, the author of many books. I've loved, as I said a few minutes ago, I've loved to to watch the evolution of Cindy as a teacher and a Mm -hmm. writer. Uh, and you just, you're, you're like fine wine, Cindy, you're getting better and better. And this new book, this new book is, uh, it's, it's all the books are good. This, this book is pretty doggone good. Uh, spiritual coupling. It's a guidebook for experiencing a holy relationship. Uh, may, may I share your, uh, the brief story you've got in the book, uh, a Buddhist story. May I share that? Oh, wonderful. Yeah, please. A fierce and terrifying band of samurai was riding through the countryside, bringing fear and harm wherever they went. As they were approaching one particular town, all the monks in the town's monastery fled, except for the abbot. When the band of warriors entered the monastery, they found the abbot sitting at the front of the shrine room in perfect posture. The fierce leader took out his sword and said, Don't you know who I am? Don't you know that I'm the sort of person who could run you through with my sword without batting an eye? The Zen master responded, And I, sir, am the sort of man who could be run through by a sword without batting an eye. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Yes, (sighs) yes. 
I when I when I heard that story, um, I was so inspired by that because it uh, reminded me so much of of Jesus and the the crucifixion of yes. his response to that, according to A Course in Miracles. Yeah, you know, yeah. with that 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 it was forgiven in that instant, that there was no harm done in a sense. Right. No real harm done. Right. Yeah. Powerful story. Hmm. Very powerful story. And and it, it um and that's the message of really of kind of a similar, you could say a similar message of the crucifixion, according to Jesus and of course in miracles, is that um there was no there was no batting of an eye. There was no conflict, no defense against it. It was rather it was just instantly forgiven because when you understand and know who you are in truth, you would know that what you really are can't be hurt or threatened in any way. Hmm. And if you perceive yourself that way, you're teaching that to others and making the whole game of separation of pain and attack and the game of separation real to the mind. So that, that's such a powerful story of being detached from the body and understanding your your true power yeah. and what you really are. Yeah. You, you know, I'm, we mentioned a few minutes ago that, that, you know, that question in relationship, do you want to be right or you want to be happy? You've got one of your chapters titled Right or Happy. Yeah. How do we know, Cindy, what are, what are the signs where we know we're making progress here? One of the, one of the most, I think, obvious ways that we would know we're making progress is if when things that used to upset you don't upset you anymore, that used to push mm-hmm. your buttons anytime it would happen or if someone said something to you or, and you would, you would get triggered, when you start to feel peaceful instead and you don't react in the same way, that's, that's making progress yeah. right there. Yeah. That's one of the ways. You know, um, you, you know, there's other ways too. It yeah. strikes me, Cindy, and I, I, I hope that you know you don't take offense to this. I don't mean it in any way, shape, or form. I know you've written a book called Spiritual Coupling. I know you've written a book about relationships. It's a good one, but it's really a book about forgiveness and how to forgive. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> forgiveness runs out throughout the whole book. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It does. It's so important. As it is, as it is in relationships. (laughs) That's what our relationships are for. They're for forgiveness. forgiveness. You know, I, 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 it's like, uh, forgiveness. And and I don't know. I think I, I think I made this up, but you know, who knows? I, I may have gotten it somewhere, but to me, forgiveness is like a bath or a shower. You know, you got to mm. do it. You got to do it every day. Mm. I mean, Dang. you you know if you don't, <laughs> you, <laughs> you feel it, and others know it. <laughs> but it's it's and and for many of us, especially living here in Shreveport right now, and and it's 116 degrees in the shade. I mean, we may be taking a couple of baths or showers a day, right? That's right. <laughs> That is right. And yeah. that's the deal with forgiveness. It's, it's you know, you got to have it. It's got to be there in all relationships, especially in your romantic relationships, are, mm-hmm. are you going to know it? Mm-hmm. And you said something very important, that um, it requires uh, practice every single day, hmm. usually. I mean, if there's, sure, there's exceptions, but, but usually things come up throughout the day, even if it seems like something very minor or that maybe it's something that, that you don't think that's a big deal, yet you feel like a twinge of annoyance, even that is worthy of practicing forgiveness for. Just even the something where you're just slightly triggered means you're still not at peace. Something that appeared to be outside right. of you caused you to feel upset or, you know, that was the perceived cause as being outside of you for your upset. So that would still require forgiveness. Hmm. Hmm. Even if it's something that seems very minor. Yeah. Um, there's no distinction between something huge 
that we feel we need to give or, or something, something little, it still means our minds are not at peace in that moment. Hmm. Yeah. So, so forgiveness would be the answer to that. Always. <laughs> always. Always. Always and always. <laughs> mm-hmm. And always. Yeah. 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 What do you really want us to, and again, this book, I mean, Jimmy, can we have three more hours? Uh, because I we wish. need, we need, we need at least that to cover yeah. everything that's in this book. Uh, Cindy, we've just, <laughs> we've just basically scratched the surface. Uh, and Jimmy's over here, you know, uh, shaking his head. He's not going to give us the three more hours. Hey, I'm but. glad that I had an expert <laughs> today to get my back you had a lifeline you had had, had a lifeline what do you want us what do you want us to really take away uh from uh, all of your books are good they've gotten better and better what do you want us to take away from i think so far your best yet spiritual coupling what what do you want what do you want people to take away from here um from this book. That the goal the goal is not merely to to perceive yourself as one with other people or the world or the universe, but to ultimately use your relationships to ultimately recognize your oneness with God, with your source, and that all of your brothers and sisters, including your partners, everyone, no matter who it is, are part of that oneness with you and our relationships. And working through them and forgiving them is what gets us there to our ultimate relationship with God that recognizes that we're all, we're all one. All minds are joined and the separation hasn't occurred. That would be the ultimate message in how to work. Uh, that's where, what we're working towards when we forgive in our relationships. So I think this, this new book, Spiritual Coupling, which you can get at Amazon, and it's from the principles of A Course in Miracles, I... I think it's your richest book so far. Um, well, thank and you. You are you are quite welcome. And I also think you know, yeah, it's a book, so we're going to take it and we're going to read it, right, chapter after chapter after chapter, chapter, and we're going to digest it. But I think it's also the kind of book that uh, you're probably going to want to put right, you know, if if on your coffee if if on your coffee table or your nightstand. Uh, is a copy of A Course in Miracles, I think you're probably going to want to put spiritual coupling r- right, right there, right, right there on your, on your, uh, <laughs> on your nightstand. Cindy Laura Renaud, uh, and you can go to uh, Cindy Laura Renaud dot com or Cindy Laura dot com rather, uh, C I N D Y L O R A dot com. Spiritual coupling, a guidebook for experiencing a holy relationship.
And welcome back. Welcome back into 1017 FM 710 Keel. Welcome back into Strategies for Living. Jimmy Bryant, David McMillan, and our life strategist, Cindy Laura Renard. Uh, Spiritual Coupling is her, is her new book. Uh, y- you and Gary were going to originally work on this together, and then uh, then then kind of the Holy Spirit said something different to both of you, right? <laughs> that, that's right. That was the guidance. The guidance was that I was to do to do this book uh, since Gary was uh, already beginning the process of working on his other book, his fifth book. So it just made sense yeah. um, to do it this way. And uh, that was our guidance, and that was guided by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, That's going to excite uh, a lot of people, too, to hear Gary's working on a, on a fifth book. Um, Absolutely. And does, it will. Does, yeah. he, does he let you peek in a, a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Very need a little bit, not too much uh, for me. I understand. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 but a little bit if it's relevant to something, maybe, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. make sure you you tell Gary that we're <laughs> we're we're you know we're thinking of him and and uh, uh, we we wish him we wish him the best as he as he dives in and and writes number five. Um, of course, oh, nice. you know a disappearance disappearance of the universe is still a classic and um, so you know. Yeah, it, you, if you if you want to get three books together, uh, get A Course in Miracles, get Spiritual Coupling, get Disappearance of the Universe, and you got a whole library right there. That'll keep you busy for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Cindy, well. this it's it's always a pleasure when you when you come to Strategies, and I hope you'll come back again and again and again. I, I know you can't uh, come as much when you're when you're in the process of writing, um, and I know you're probably in the middle of going. So I won't ask you if you're gonna if if there's another book in place because you're probably just going. <laughs> ah, I'm just glad to be done with this one. But <laughs> thank you so a little, much. A little breather. Little break. I really love being on. I thank you so much too for having me on. I always enjoy it. Thank we'll you. look we'll look forward to the next time you come on. In the meantime, folks, continue the conversation with Cindy Laura Renard at CindyLaura.com and get this book, Spiritual Coupling, a guidebook for experiencing a holy relationship. Thank you for tuning in to Strategies for Living. Uh, Of course, uh, we do this program each and every day for you, and we couldn't do it without our wonderful sponsors. The Robinson Film Center and Azalea Cleaners and Learning RX and Pintail Roofing. And Cannabis with Love, Hempress, at uh, 3766 Yuri Drive in Shreveport. And, of course, the Shreveport Little Theater. If today, if today were the last day of your life, you only had one more phone call that you could make, well, who is it that you'd call? And what would you be saying? And here's the, here's the important question. Why are you waiting? Make the call. For Cindy Laura Renard, I'm David McMillan. For Jimmy Bryant, see you next time on Strategies for Living.